Have you ever been driving, listening to the radio, and the song that's playing is okay, but it's not great, and you want to change the station, but you're not sure if you'll find a better song? Well, I built this machine for that specific situation. My name is Ryder, and this is the automatic radio tuner machine from the few, I don't know what to call it. This machine listens to all radio stations at the same time and lets you know if any are playing your favorite song, so you don't have to search ever again. But Ryder, who listens to the radio when we have Bluetooth in our cars? Do you know what it's like to set up Bluetooth in my car? Select phone. Say the name of the device you would like to select. Available devices are... Ryder's phone. Which device, please? Ryder's phone. Ryder's phone. Is this correct? Yes. Ryder's phone. Not found. F I use the radio. Before I show you it working, I want to show you how I built it and how the radio works in general because there's a lot of neat things that you wouldn't really consider. Before we understand how the radio works, we have to understand how the electromagnetic spectrum works. It's more than a word I use at parties to make myself sound smart, but it's also that. Radio is comprised of waves, and the only difference between the ones that broadcast Avril Lavigne songs to my car and the ones that x-ray my teeth at the dentist is frequency. If we line up the waves from shortest to longest, we get the electromagnetic spectrum, with gamma rays being the shortest and radio waves being the longest. X-rays, Wi-Fi, broadcast radio, and the light from the sun, which burns me because I'm whiter than a person who walks their cat, all fall on this spectrum. The only difference between them is their frequency. Frequency is measured in hertz, or cycles per second. And a radio station like 95.3 FM has a frequency of 95,300,000 cycles per second, which coincidentally is the same frequency I strike out on Tinder. Your car's radio is built to pick up certain frequencies, and your eyes are built to pick up frequencies in the visible light spectrum. So in a weird high school stoner way, your eyes are like a radio for the sun. Now, why does my car radio only go from 87 to 107? The answer is the government, but we can better explain it by heading to the airport. So let's go there. So the radio in your car only goes up to 107.9, but why is that? The radio band of the electromagnetic spectrum is huge, and we have a lot of things that use the radio besides Avril Lavigne. Ambulances, planes, police, and walkie-talkies all use the band but we don't want them interfering with each other. So a long time ago, the US government said, you know what, this section right here, this is for music and weird contests where you have to spend an hour on the phone for concert tickets. And every other country was like, yeah, that sounds good, let's do that too. But what if you could turn your car to 108? What would you hear? You would be able to do the same thing as what one of these does. This is an airband radio, and it lets me communicate with planes in the air. Just above the last radio station, you'll find air navigation navigation. And just above that, you'll hear air communication, so pilots talking to each other. And we can do that right now at the airport. This is called the CFS. It lists all of the data for all of the airports across Canada. And let's find the one that I'm at. I have my software-defined radio tuned to the frequency of the airport, which is 122.8 megahertz. Now we're using AM because all aircraft broadcast using AM. And we should be able to hear planes communicate with each other. There's a plane on the apron just over there that's doing its run-up, and once it does so, it's going to head onto the runway, and it will probably make a radio call. It doesn't technically have to make a radio call before it gets on the runway. It can stay as silent as it wants because this is an uncontrolled airport, but that's probably not going to happen because it's almost certainly a student pilot, and their instructor would have their heads for doing that. Traffic, traffic, South Scotland, Romeo is taxing 05, holding short 35. If you were able to tune your car as high as, let's say, 122.8 and set it to AM, you'd be able to hear airplanes communicating with each other. Now this doesn't affect our project, but I thought it was cool to recognize that just above where we're broadcasting music, pilots are communicating. So I'm going to use the same software-defined radio I used to listen in to build this project, so let's get started. The first thing we're going to need is a software-defined radio, or SDR. It's a device that consists of an antenna and a USB receiver that allows your computer to adjust all the settings like frequency, modulation, and anything else you may need. This one I picked up online lets me listen to a wide range of frequencies including the radio band and the air band, and broadcast radio is all I need. Fun fact, Canadian radio stations are required by law to play, I think, 30% Canadian content, which is why we always have Justin Bieber and Avril Lavigne on the radio here. 
Always. You will hear it at least once a day. I started by writing Python code to control the radio. It sets the radio to a specific frequency of my choosing, like 103.1 FM, and then writes the output of the radio device, which is sound, to a WAV file on my computer. It times out after about 5 seconds because I really don't need any more sound than that to identify the song. Okay, oh my god. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm trying to figure out how to listen to the radio and save it as an audio file. And clearly I've done something horribly wrong. Listen to this. Oh, this is horrifying. I am so gifted as a software engineer that I can use my code to communicate directly with the devil. Next, I started looking into audio fingerprinting services. You're probably already familiar with audio fingerprinting through apps like Shazam and Soundhound. These apps allow you to hold the microphone to a song that's playing, and it will tell you the name of it. There's a ton of YouTube videos that explain how it works in detail, but it compares frequencies in the sample of the recording that you took to a known database of pretty much all songs. If it finds a match, it then returns you specific information about the song from its database. Now, I could hack a mobile application like Shazam or Soundhound to make it do the work for me, but I can skip them all together, which is easier, and use an audio fingerprinting API. There are multiple companies, but I decided to use ACR Cloud because they have a free tier and most other companies won't answer emails that start with, Hi, I am a YouTuber. Through a Python script, I upload the WAV file that I just created to their service, and it pretty instantaneously returns a document of information to me that looks like this. This is an organized format known as JSON, JavaScript Object Notation. And you can see that it's identified the song and returned all known information about it, including the name, the artist, the album, and even how many seconds we are into the song. With this information, I can filter it against a list of songs from Spotify that I already know that I like. I can then speak the songs aloud using text-to-speech, or display them on an LCD screen that took me two hours to get working because I didn't connect the wires in the first place. And when it's all together and working, it looks something like this. Okay, let's see if this will work. So, and then play. Okay, so it's listening to the radio now, just on one frequency that I like. And the song, the If the World Was <gasps> Ending Feet. Julia Michaels by JP. Yes! Okay, let's check. The song, If the World Was Yes! Oh, this is so good! playing on 103.1. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, uh, we need to make a box, and this piece of wood would be really nice to do it with, but in order to do that, I need to use the table saw, and I'm not fully confident in my ability not to completely murder myself with it. So instead, I picked up this piece of trim, which will do the trick. So I promised myself I would actually build it properly this time, with measurements and everything. No, that's the biggest lie I told myself since I said I was going to use quarantine to get healthy. But please enjoy me turning this beautiful piece of pine into an unmitigated disaster. I'm first drilling what's called a pilot hole, which is where you drill a smaller hole before you put the screw in, and that helps with cracking and just helping the screw go in in general. I cracked it. That is exactly, this is, this is why I was drilling the pilot holes, was to prevent this. The project is already ruined. It's already ruined. Why? Nothing ever works. Nothing ever works for me, I promise you. Not in, not in woodworking, not in relationships. Nothing ever works. I don't know, maybe it gives it character. This can work. It's like, it's like a flower bed. Constructed by someone with severe psychological trauma. Can we do better? Probably not. But let's try anyway. This started off so well. get in eyes or on skin or clothing. Great. Wear gloves, goggles, or use only in a well-ventilated area. Great. I did everything not, I'm not supposed to.
With the basics of the box built, I chiseled out some space for the LCD screen and drilled some holes for the toggle switches. There's something about using this kind of switch with software that is so satisfying. I can't put my finger on it. I soldered the switches to the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi. They're designed for high voltage, but they do the same thing no matter what. I then glued everything into place and just kind of forced stuff into the box because I stopped giving a f a long time ago. And with that, we have a finished product. So please enjoy this triumphant music because for once I'm actually proud of something that I built. Waterloo! Promise to love you forevermore. Uh, there we go. So this is the machine, and I did not design it to fit well into the car, but that's what seat belts are for. It needs internet to function, and while I do own an add-on for the Raspberry Pi that connects it to a SIM card, that is way too much work, so I just tethered it to my phone. Let's plug it in. It should let me know when it is ready. I gave it the Windows Millennium Edition startup sound because... I honestly don't think it belongs in this decade. It starts at the top of the spectrum by listening to a specific radio station, making a five second recording, and then sending it off to get processed. If it finds something like it just did, it will announce it out loud and display it on the screen. Intentions by Justin Bieber is playing on 107.7. This is fantastic. If it doesn't find anything, it will switch to another station and just continuously do that down the spectrum until it reaches the bottom and then it will start over again. Oh. Okay, ACDC on 95.9. Let's get it. This device would have made me a lot of money had I invented it in the 90s. These switches are pretty cool. The top one, if it's switched off, it will announce every song, and if it's switched on, it will only announce songs that are my favorite. For the middle switch, if, you better by Shawn Mendes is if I turn this middle switch on, it will announce how many seconds we have left in the song. There are 116 seconds left. If it's under a certain time, let's say there's only 30 seconds left, I know not to tune to it. And finally, this bottom one, if I turn it on, will actually reroute the audio to the speakers as it's making the recording. It's mostly a debugging thing, but it's cool to listen to what it's listening to and have it identify songs that mainly sound like static. Intentions by Justin Bieber is playing on 107.7. See, I told you, so much Justin Bieber. So that's pretty much it. If weird electronics and insecurity masked as self-deprecating humor are your thing, consider subscribing. And if you have an idea for me to build, write it in the comments. Otherwise, don't ever talk to me or my son ever FM. Okay, that was really bad. <laughs>